Okay, so we're going to start off by looking at what are called um, relations and functions. Both of those you can draw pictures of. Okay? You can draw a picture of a relation, you can draw a picture of a function, but the picture of a function is special. Okay? If something's a function, something special happens. Okay? That doesn't happen in just any old picture. Okay? So we'll, we'll talk about what happens special in a function. All right, so I just want you guys to look at this, and I'm going to ask you a question. It'll be something you have to write down at some point, we'll have to copy this down. It says, Ann worked as a lifeguard, making $7 an hour. It says, in one hour, she made $7. Two hours, she made double, $14. In three hours, she made $21. In four hours, she made $28. So, if you notice, there's a connection here between the number of hours she worked and how much money she made, right? So, we can represent how many hours she worked and how much money she made as ordered pairs. Okay? And I think, um, yep, yeah, this is the first thing we can write down. So, how much money did she make for one hour? Uh, seven dollars. Seven. So we could write down one, seven. One is hours, seven is dollars. And that's how it's going to be set up in all of our coordinates. How about in two hours? Two fourteen. Two fourteen. Three hours? Uh, 321. Three and then four hours? Four twenty-eight. Four twenty-eight. So what we just created there is a set of ordered pairs that summarizes everything we just wrote up above. Okay. Writing it out this way, that's the long way. Okay, you gotta write out all these sentences. That's the short way. Okay, so that's what we're showing you is just that's one example of how you could use ordered pairs. The first number could represent hours. The second number could represent money. Okay? And it's important that we set it up that way. You can't switch it. Hours has to be the first one, money the second one. Okay? And we'll talk more about why that is later today. Okay, so that set of ordered pairs, that is what we call a relation. Okay? And I think you have a spot on your notes to write that word in. Specifically, what we have there, that's a set of four ordered pairs. One, two, three, four. And that's called a relation. Okay, so a relation, if you're ever asked, like, what is a relation? It's a bunch of ordered pairs. Okay, that's all it is. Okay. Now, if you look, there's a first coordinate and a second coordinate. Here's the first coordinate. One, two, three, four. Those four numbers have a special name. Okay. What letter are they? Like what letter always come first in a coordinate? To X. <coughs> X. So they're they're the X's. But another name for them is the domain. So the first number in a coordinate, it's called the X, but it's also called the domain. Okay. Another word for it, we put just below, okay, is called the input. Also, the oh. Yeah, fill in on your own. So let's go up and, and look at our, see if I can keep this on the screen. So for our set, okay, we called it set S. And I already circled them for you. But what's the domain of, of that set? What's, give me a list of all the first values. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, if you have a first value that repeats, you don't need to list it twice. Like, if you had this set, and I said to you, what's, what's, what's the domain? Um, you don't need to say two, four, two. You just have to say the domain is two and four. There's no need, no need to repeat it. Thank you, Mr. Wayne. 
Um, any questions on that? You don't need to repeat it. What happens if you do want to test for me? Still get a comma? No, it's fine. You just don't need to say two, two, four. Just two and four. Um, so for our set, the domain, one, two, three, four. Okay, so can someone remind me again, what's um, what's the first coordinate called? It's the domain. domain. What's another name for it? Input. Input. And the last name I was just going to ask was X. Okay, now the second coordinate, okay, the 7, the 14, 21, 28, if you put all those numbers in a list, um, what, what letter are those? Y. Those are your Ys. Another name for them? The range. Just the range. All right. So domain and range are two words that we often use together. Input, output. Those are two words we use together. Okay. So the y values are also called the range of the relation. Okay. They're also called the output. So on a test, if you saw a question that said list the y values in the relation. Or, if it said, write the output of the relation. Or, if it said, write the range of the relation. All three things I just said, exactly the same. So for our set, what are the y values? What, what's the range? 7, 14, 21, 28. 7, 14, 21, 28. Again, same deal, if, if you have a y value that repeats, you don't need to say it every single time it repeats. You just have to say it once. If you say it more than once, it's fine, but you don't, you don't need to. Okay, any questions on, on those two words? Domain, x's, range, y's. So let's practice uh, making a graph. Okay, so when they ask us to graph, all that I mean is put put the dot where it should go, and then identify the domain and range. All right, who can tell me uh, three zero? How do I graph three zero? Yeah, Jack? You only go right to the three. You only go right three times. Perfect. You go right three times. And that's it. You said you only go right three. So that's the first one. Um, negative one, two. Can someone else tell me how to graph negative one, two? Will? You're going to one on the x axis. Yep, left one. And then you'll go up two. Up two. Perfect. All right. How about four, one? Yeah. You go right four times and then you go up once. Perfect. Right four, up one. Um, how about negative two, negative one? Someone else tell me that one. Xander? I'm going to go over left twice. Left two, yep. Up one. I'm down one. Down one, yep. Left two, down one. Um, and one, negative two. Noah? You go over one. Which way is over? Right. Right one? You're down two. Down two. Okay. Right, so we've done the first part. We graphed it. Any questions on the, the graph? Yeah, here I go, right All right, now, after we get the graph, they want us to identify the domain and the range. Um, Xander, Z, can you give me another name for domain? Input. Input. Um, Fred, can you give me one more name? Uh, what letter is it? Domain X or Y? Uh, not sure. Can anyone help him out? Domain, which letter? Gemini? X. X's. Okay, who can tell me? And let's try to do it in order lowest to highest. Okay. What's the what's the lowest value in the domain? One. Negative one. Yeah. 
I think negative one is the lowest. Sorry. Oh, no, negative, Wait, two. No, negative two. Actually, negative two. So let's, let's start with those two. Negative two. Negative one. I like to check them as I go so I don't forget that I did them. Um, what's after that? One. One. Okay, let's put that one. Next. Three. And then four. Do I have any repeats? No, if you do have a repeat, we're going to talk about what that means in a little bit. But there's no repeats here. Um, range. All right, what's the smallest value in the range? Negative two. Uh, yeah, negative two. Uh, next smallest? You know what, let me just go like this. Negative one. Negative one. Uh, one. I mean zero, zero, zero. Yep, then I think we got zero. And we got one. Uh, yep, we've got one. We have two. We have two. <laughs> so, are the domain and range the same there? Yes. No, no, no. no. Yeah, they yeah. crossed twice. Are there the same numbers in each? No. 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 So, the domain and range can be different. Depends on what the coordinates are. They don't have to have the same numbers. Some of them might be the same, but then some of them might be different. Okay. Any question on... Identifying domain and range. Okay. So this is one way they can have you identify domain and range. Okay. They give you in, just like that. Okay. Another way I could have you do it on the test would I actually give you this picture. Okay. And you just look at the graph and tell me the domain and range. So some people like to write down the coordinates. So if you'd like to do that, maybe that's the first thing you'd want to do. Okay, that's up to you. Um, this one we don't have to graph. Just the domain and range. This is example 1B. Okay, preferably, if you can, order from lowest to highest would be um, helpful. It's not wrong if you don't do that, but that's generally the order. Um, so, Joe, you want to start me with my domain? Sure. You do negative 1, All right. 0, 2, 3. Zero. 1, 2, 3. Zero. Two. Three. Good. So, there's my domain, which is also called the input or x. There's actually a fourth name. I haven't told you that one yet. But for now, if you know those three, that's good. I'm going to tell you the fourth one at the end of the lesson today. Um, range. Somebody give me one number in the range, just one. X. Zero. All right, we've got zero. All right. What else, Paige? Negative two. Negative two. Why do you see the negative? All right, next one, Jack. One. One. Good job. And we got one more. Sophia. Six. Six. That's it. Uh -huh. So when they ask you for domain and range, that's it. That's all you got to do. Any questions on what we did there? Jeff? I mean, um, Will? Uh, so for like the range, you're just taking the smallest of the right? For the range, you're writing down all the y values. There is something else in math called range where you subtract the highest and the lowest. That's different. So like if, let's say the highest score on the test was a 90, and the lowest score was a 60, I would say the range is 30 points, but that, that's totally different kind of range. So you're just thinking of something else. Oh. All right, so notice in the first two examples, okay, the first coordinates never repeated, right? Two, zero, negative one, three. I didn't say any number twice. Same thing on the other page, uh, or the other example. If none of the first coordinates repeat, then not only do you have a relation, you have something special. Okay? You have a special kind of relation called a function. All right, so you can just take any old ordered pairs, write them down, and it's a relation. But if it's a function, 
none of the first coordinates are the same. None of them repeat. All right, so now what I might ask you in a question is, tell me the domain and range, and then one extra step. Tell me if you have a function, okay? No repeats, you're good, you got a function. If you have a repeat, then it's not a function. So, in a function, it's okay if the second coordinate repeats. We don't care about the second coordinate. Okay. It's all about the first coordinate. Okay, So the second coordinate may repeat. You might have a couple that are the same. But no two ordered pairs can have the same first coordinate. So again, to be a function, the first coordinate cannot repeat, ever. The second coordinate, sure, you can have the second coordinate, do whatever you want. No repeats in the first coordinate. So let's look at a uh, problem. And now I'm going to ask you one extra step. I'm going to ask you what the domain is, what the range is, and then is it a function? That will either be yes or no. Okay, let's start with our domain. Uh, Connor, could you give me one number in the domain here? One. Yeah, one. I'm going to put it right there because I don't think it's the smallest one, so I'm going to leave a little bit of space. Um, can somebody give me another number in the domain? Joe? Negative two. Negative two. I think that one is the smallest. Okay, negative one. Fill that one in. Um, Will, can you give me another number in the domain? Um, so it's y. So, yeah, two. Two, yep. Two. And Sophia, the last number in the domain? Three. Okay, range. What's going to be my y value? Let's start with the smallest one. Fred? Negative three. Negative three. Now, if it repeats, do I have to write it twice? No. No, I've written it once. You've told me it's in the range. You don't have to tell me it's in the range twice. Negative three. Um, what about the next smallest? Fred? Negative one. Negative one. Good job. Uh, we've got two more that are in the range. First is three. Three. And can anyone give me the largest value? Uh, Yep. Five. Now, were there any repeats there? Yes. Yes. We have to check, was it a repeat in the first coordinate or was it in the second coordinate? It was the second coordinate. It was in the second coordinate. It was negative one, negative three. Okay. So the second coordinate was negative three, negative three. And we had three and three. I didn't think there was anything else that repeated in the in the Y's. No. All right, so in order to be a function, where can you not have repeats? The domain. The domain, the X's, the first one. Was there any repeats in the first ones? No. So we're good. And this, this is a function. There was a repeat in the Y's, but it says that's okay. The second coordinates may be the same but not the first, okay? Any question why that's a, why that one's a function? Okay. Question. What's the rating outside? Not sure. Hold on. Yes. Um, yeah, okay, same directions here. Who thinks they could give me the entire domain? All the numbers in the domain. Again, if it repeats, you don't have to tell it to me twice. Just 
One C squared. Yeah? Six and four. Six and four. Okay. So domain, six and four. Four and six, doesn't matter. Okay, range. X? One, two, three. One, two, three. <coughs> okay, did we have any repeats? Yes, so now we need to check. Was it a repeat in the domain? Yes. Or was it a repeat in the range? It's the domain range. Domain. Oh, no. Kind of a stupid question, but do you have any tissues? Uh, yep, I got a paper towel on that camera. All right, I'll get a rough set paper towel. Okay, so where, can someone remind me again, where was the repeat? In Joe? The in the domain. So it's not a function. Right, if you have a repeat in the x's, you do not have a function. Okay. So, if, is it still a relation? Is this still a group of ordered pairs? Yes. Yes. In fact, it says it's a relation. But it's just not a function. Okay? Still a relation, not a function. Yeah? So the, the repeat? Four and four. Okay? Okay, this one's a little different. What's um, what's different about this example? Well, it's in a it's in a table, right? Instead of writing it as a coordinate, they did an input-output table. But these are your coordinates: negative two, three, negative one, four, okay, and so on. So, um, you don't have to give me the domain in range. All you have to do here is say, is it a function? Mm, let's see. No. Can someone remind me, what are you checking for? Repeats. Repeats where? In the domain. In, in the input, in the domain. So, do we have a repeat in the domain? Yeah, that's Zero. Zero and zero. Zero. Uh, so because, because we have a repeat, what does that mean? It's not a function. Not a function. <laughs> Is that table printed on your sheet? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you already have that written on your sheet. Okay, not a function. I don't have written It's That table's not filled in on yours? No. Okay, I'll make it bigger so we can see it. I can see it. I can see it. Now, what if I did this? What if I got rid of that one? Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a function. Wow. That would be a function. Yeah. What if I got rid of that one? It's still be a function. That would be a function. Function. Be a function. function. What if I got rid of that one? That would be a function. That would not be a function. Okay, to be a function, I'd have to get rid of one of the repeats. Okay. All right. Is that one? Okay. Let's look at this one. Right. So what I'm showing you is all the different ways that you can write what you can write down um, input output. You can write it as coordinates. You can write it as a table. You can write it as what's called a mapping diagram. Okay, so this is a input output diagram or domain range diagram. Okay. Let's Will tell me how I would write down my coordinates from that diagram. Um, so you uh, put negative one comma four. Yeah, so if you wanted to write coordinates, negative one would go with four. Okay, what would be the next one? Uh, three, three would go with 15. Just let me do it. And 11 would go with 15. Not you, Now, if you don't want to write the coordinates, you don't have to. But I'm just trying to make this problem like one you've already done, like that. So, is, is that a function? Gotta be careful. Gemini? It is a function because it's not repeating in the domain. Right. This is a function. There is a repeat right here. But that's in the. Second one. That's the second range. one. That's the range. So the answer is yes. The 
this is a function. So, how can you tell from a, from a diagram if it's a function? As long as each number on the left only has one arrow coming from it. Okay? If you have something like this, now that's a problem. Because now you've got the same number on the left going to two different numbers on the right. So you'd have negative 1, 4. You'd have negative 1, 15. Now you have a repeat. Okay? So that's how you can tell by looking at a picture if it's a function. Make sure there is only one arrow coming from each number on the left. More than one arrow to a number on the right, like that, no problem. That's a repeat in the range. That's not in the domain. Okay? I find a lot of people usually like to make a coordinate and then write it that way. So any questions on that diagram? You might also see this diagram written this way. Domain, range. Or, actually, you know what? I won't even cross it out. I'll just write it above it. Um, what's another word you could see? Or another way you can write domain? X. And range? Y. Y. So you could see any of those titles on each each thing there, okay? Any of those. Okay. So, if you have a picture, okay, how can you tell quickly by looking at a picture that something is a function, okay? Without writing down all the coordinates, okay? You can use a special test called the vertical line test. All right. So the vertical line test. It's a very quick and simple way to tell if something is a function. Now, you guys are going to need the second page of notes. Is this still on the first page? No. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're like yes. at the end of the Yeah, but yeah, we're still on, we're still on yes. the back of the first page? Yes. I got the second page right here. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It's still on the back side. What? What? Yeah, it's, right it's on the back side. Okay. Yes, it is. Right? What? What? So, vertical line. If you have a picture and you draw a vertical line anywhere, anywhere in the picture, and it only hits your graph once, then your graph is a function. If you have a picture and you put a vertical line anywhere you want, and it hits your graph more than once, then it is not a function. Okay? Let's look at this one. Okay. The one on the left. If I put a vertical line in that picture anywhere, okay, I'm dragging it through all the different places, does it ever hit more than once? No. No. No matter where I put it, it only hits once. The graph on the left, this is a function. Okay. Let's do the one on the right. Is it hitting more than once there? No. How about there? No. Yes. 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 It's triggered. Okay. So in that case, that is not a function. It doesn't matter where you put the vertical line. You can put it anywhere. If it can hit the graph more than once, it's not a function. And if something's not a function, that means if you wrote the coordinates for that graph on the right, there would be a repeat in the what? Repeat in the. Yep. Well, let's just answer that first. There would be a repeat in the domain. Okay? And if you're asking, well, where's the repeat? Here, here, and here. Okay, every, every one of those coordinates, Noah, hi, every one of those coordinates has the same x value, but they all have different heights, right? They all line up differently up and down. So that's a problem. If you have the same x value paired up with different y values, that's, that's repeats. Yeah. So, well, are you going to put like, this on our test, like the wires? 
Yeah, I'll give you a picture like that, and I'll ask you, is it a function? Yes, sir. Are we supposed to draw that? Um, as long as you understand the difference between the two. I need to <laughs> yeah, It'll be online, don't worry. I'll let you copy it after. Huh? Okay, so any, any questions, guys, when something's a function or not a function? All right, so Fred, you tell me, using that vertical line test, how do I tell if something is a function or not? Joe, can you explain to Fred how we tell? Well, if you use a vertical line test, you would um, go through, like I would use a, with a straight line or... Yeah, use a ruler, make a straight line, sure. Something, and um, you'd see if it, if it touches two times at once, then it's not a... Yeah, not a um, function. Function. Thank you, thank you Zander. You're exactly. Welcome. So if you put a vertical line in there and it hits it yeah. more than once, it's not a function. So how about a circle? It hits it, twice. It could hit twice. So is a circle a function? No. Yes. No. No, it's not. It's because of the line. It's like a rectangle. How about if I had something like this? Would a vertical line hit that more than once? No. No. A horizontal line would, but that's that's totally separate. Okay, vertical line would only hit that once. How about this? Would a vertical line hit that more than once? No. 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 How about the same thing on its side? Yes. Vertical line would hit more than once. All right. So, do you guys have example three A on your notes? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, sorry. Alright, so for example 3A, I want you to look at the coordinates, which I think are already on your sheet. List them out, write the domain, write the range, and then tell me if it is a function. Okay? Now, I showed you graphs before that were connected. They don't have to be connected. You could just have dots. See if you put a vertical line, if it would hit two dots at the same time. Don't answer that, just write it down on your paper, and that'll tell you whether or not it's a function. So first thing, um, who can tell me the one of the ordered pairs? Yeah, just go ahead, give me one of them. Negative two, three. Negative two, three, he just gave me that one. Good. All right, can someone give me, Gemini, give me another one? Um, negative 2, 1. Negative 2, 1. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we got two more. Sophia? Negative 3, negative 1. Negative 3, negative 1. Careful, that would be down there. <coughs> you don't want to go negative 3, you want to go oh, positive. positive 3. Positive. And then up how many? 1, 2. 2. two. I don't know, is yours different? I think it's no. the same. Okay. 3, 2. And one more. Unless maybe you were giving me this, I'm not sure. This one maybe? Because you did say negative three, there's yeah. a negative three in yeah. this one, but it's the second number. Negative yeah. One, three. yeah, this one is negative one, negative three. Oh, negative, yeah. negative three. Right. So you should have four all together. Yep. Any point that's in this area, that's a negative, negative. Oh. Any point, actually I'll write it down right here. Uh, he had a meeting. Oh. Negative, negative. Any point that's in the upper right, that's a positive, positive. Okay. Any point in the upper left, okay, negative, positive. In the upper right or lower right, Joe, what's, what would be the coordinates in the lower right? On the lower right, that'd be. Negative one, negative one. In the lower right, it's a positive. Okay, domain. Um, what is my domain? Fred, what's my domain? You got this, right? Negative two. All right, I like that. No, never mind. Keep going, I like it. Negative two. Yep, so he said negative two twice. We're going to come back to that, but I'm not going to write it twice. Negative one. Negative one. Yep. Three. 
I'm not going to cross it out because then it's going to look like I'm crossing out my answer. So negative two, negative one, three. Good. Um, range. Ooh. Yep. Can I give you the range too, Fred? Uh, one. One. Yep. Three. Okay. Yep. And two. So so I, see, them in order. I just put them in order. If you don't, that's okay. Oh. Now. So do you always have to put them in order? Or? I put them in order. If you don't, that's okay. So would you get minus points if you don't put them in order? No. Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, it'll be easier to spell them in order. So, is that a function? Yeah, no? No. No, why not? Because um, negative two repeats in the domain. All right, so negative two repeats in the domain. Can anybody else tell me why it's not a function not, not using the repeat idea? Yeah? Vertical line. Right, if you put a vertical line, look what happens. It hits the same points, or it hits two different points. Okay? Your line cannot hit two things at the same time, and it does. So is that a function? No. Not a function. Um, any question on 3B? I think, let's skip over 3B because I think you guys would be okay with that. I don't have That's on the second page. Yeah. Okay, this one's a little different. Now, what's different about this picture? Oof. Be careful. What's different about it compared to that picture and that picture? X? It has lines, like, it has lines right? But you still can tell what the things are because at the, very, at the corner, so you like, yep. like up here. Like, this, wouldn't this be a point? Well, yeah, there's a bunch of points, right? Here's a point. Here's a point. Here's a point. Here's a point. This one has a bunch of points. So they're not asking you to list all the points, okay? Because there's so many points now that they're all close together, they're making a line, or a line that actually turns a couple times. So, the domain, what's the lowest value in the domain here? I can't see the domain. Yeah, it should be on your notes too. It's on your notes. What's the lowest one, Sophia? Negative two, two. Negative two. Negative two. Watch your and What's the highest value in the domain? Just give me a single number. X? Five. Five. Now, the domain, because it's connected, includes every single number between negative two and five. Does it include one? Yep. Does it include two? Yep. 2.5? Yep. 2.6? 2.7? 2.8? 2.9? 2.9? 2.9? 2.9? 2.9? 2.9? I'm going to show you how you write the domain. Okay. So the domain, you just can write down all numbers between negative 2 and 5. Gotcha. It's everything. Negative 2, negative 1.5, negative 1.4, 0 0.6. Okay, because it's connected. What number is that? Negative two or, or negative Every two. number between negative two and five. Every fraction, every possible decimal you can think of between negative two and five. Oh, okay. 4.6, 4.7, 4.8, 4.9, because it's connected. Okay, anytime <laughs> it's connected, that's how you have to write it. How about range? What's the, what's the lowest value in my range? Yeah? Dose. Yep. So we're starting at two. Using the Spanish. What's the highest value? Five. Four. Um, so it's all numbers between two and two. Two and five. Two and no, four. I don't think it goes as high two as five. Two. two and four. Yeah. So you could name any decimal, any fraction you want between 2 and 4, 3.7. If I draw a line at 3.7, it's going to hit it somewhere. There's 3.7 on the y-axis. Because it's a y-axis number. Yep. Is that a function? Yes. 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 
That is a function. Yes, Okay. Um, okay, the last one, I just want you to write down if it's not already in your notes. Another name for the x is the independent variable. Another name for y is dependent variable. Okay, so in addition to domain and range, um, x is also called independent, y is called dependent. So now the last one, I'm not going to have time to go through the whole thing. Don't be in at 57. Yeah, the clocks are a little off from the time change. Oh, yeah, In the last example, okay, they give you, I'll vary away, they give you a formula. And they tell you that x is the number of sips you take of this drink. And what they do is they say, let's say you take zero sips, one sips, one sips, one sip, two, three, and four. And they ask you, as you keep taking sips, how much is going to be left in the glass? So if you don't sip anything out of the glass, you basically get what you started with. You get 12. What's for homework? Dude! This problem. So I hope you understand how to do it. If you take one sip out of the glass, you plug in an x1. If you take two sips out of the glass, you plug in a 2 for x. If you take three sips out of the glass, you plug in a 3 for x. And you just have to fill in the, the table. So just this problem? Uh, that's one of the problems. Yep. So the homework is going to be to finish example four and um, worksheet work on um, the section we just did, which I'll give you on the way up. Well, you just need to use the. No, that's why you don't have a teacher. This problem, you use the equations. 